this part of the node is named Adobe Camera Raw plugin to Photoshop workflow, but it's really about the philosophy of raw. So what should you do in each program and your transition going from ACR to Photoshop workflow? Generally in ACR, I suggest you make as many global U saturation and brightness corrections as you can following the four goals, which we'll talk about in just a second. And what do you do in Photoshop? I suggest doing all contrast adjustments, localized corrections of any kind, fine tuning, cropping and sharpening in Photoshop. You can then take advantage of the power of adjustment layers and layer masks, fine tuning, cloning, cropping, sharpening, and so much more. I think that we can all agree that it's important to set goals in any important endeavor, right? So the four goals are to bring your final raw image into Photoshop, slightly dark or underexposed because it's easier to lighten in Photoshop, slightly low or flat in contrast because it's easier to increase contrast in Photoshop, slightly oversaturated because it's easier to desaturate in Photoshop, and best overall color balance because you can fine tune individual areas in Photoshop. As an example of best overall color balance, you got a landscape shot. The landscape color balance looks great, but the sky is cyan. I'd go for the best landscape color balance and then correct the sky in Photoshop as necessary. Why these four goals, you ask? Well, following these four goals will bring lots of information for your digital capture into the visible spectrum and hence your master file in Photoshop. And furthermore, it provides headroom or a margin of error. It's always better to have more information than not enough, and information is king in post-processing. Keep in mind, by using these four goals, your objective is not to make a perfect image in Adobe Camera Raw, which is what most people try to do, including Lightroom users in the develop module. And you simply can't. By using these four goals, you'll take advantage of the strengths of both Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop and your overall workflow to end up with your final desired killer image via your master file. What are those strengths? Adobe Camera Raw is designed to get as much digital information as you can out of your digital capture, and Photoshop is the industry standard in using that information for the best possible and most flexible results. This is just kind of some points to remember here. I'm an advocate of the keep it super simple method. There are actually quite a few advanced tools in Adobe Camera Raw plugin. However, both in Workflow and the Spirit of Kiss, you should not be using the more advanced functions. It's quite possible that you, like me, will never use them. Other than the edit tool, which I'll show you in a little bit, I know you never use any of the various tools and brushes in Adobe Camera Raw. I call them GWiz functions, and there's three reasons I don't. The first is there's not a true history panel to fall back on like there is in Photoshop if you don't like what you see. The second is there are no true layers in Adobe Camera Raw. And the third is Photoshop does a much better job of doing what most of these GWiz functions in Adobe Camera Raw do. And how much time do I spend in each program? You should strike a balance of time spent with your file in both Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop using the strengths of each program. Typically, I'll spend 20 to 25% of my time, of my file time, if you will, in Adobe Camera Raw with the balance in Photoshop. And we're going to talk about the histogram and the visible spectrum of light. The histogram shows those pixels brought into the visible spectrum of light from your original bucket of raw capture. By bringing your file from Adobe Camera Raw into Photoshop following the four goals that we just discussed, your histogram in Photoshop should reflect it, depending on the subject matter, of course, with a bias of extra pixels to the left-hand side, similar to the Levels dialog box that's shown on the PowerPoint. Slightly underexposed, plenty of headroom, room for adjustment, particularly in the highlights. This will bring pixels from your raw capture into the visible spectrum of light and avoid digital clipping. By the way, this concept is called Exposed to the Left, Feel free to run an internet search on it for more. Uh, it's kind of technical, but there's a reason for it. And that reason is this guy right here. If it was good enough for Ansel Adams, it's good enough for me. Ansel Adams is not only a groundbreaking photographer, but he redefined what to do with your image after you shot it, post-processing. By doing so, he was a pioneer in turning printed photographs into an art form. Using the zone system, Adams and his contemporary Fred Archer were famous for exposing and chemically processing their negatives so that they were slightly low in contrast and slightly underexposed, which results in more detail in the highlights as well as in the shadows. Just like two of the goals that we just talked about, the other two goals are exclusive to color images, saturation, and overall color balance. So you can think of adjusting your raw file in the same way, but instead of using a negative in chemistry like Ansel Adams or Fred Archer did, we're processing our raw file, you can think of it as the negative, using Adobe Camera Raw, think of that as the chemistry. So let's just talk about these four images. I'll start with the original negative. Using the zone system, the initial capture is slightly underexposed and retains detail on the highlights and shadows, so it's low in contrast. Think original raw capture. If you're not familiar with black and white negatives, trust me, that is a really low contrast, retaining detail on the highlights negative, okay?
The second one is the contact sheet. The contact sheet reveals the low contrast nature of the original capture and chemical processing technique. Think first look in Adobe Camera Raw. Here's an initial print. Although low in contrast, the initial print shows all sorts of detail in the highlights as well as the foreground. Think after adjusting in Adobe Camera Raw. And here's the final print. This famous print shows how much can be done with the original capture, truly giving it that majestic pop. Think after adjusting in Photoshop.